met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the Rockefellers would like to meet you. I had made a video called Mad as Hell, and uh, he'd seen the video and wanted to meet me. I knew I was running for governor of Nevada. So sure, I'd love to meet him. And I met him, and I liked him, and uh, he was a very, very smart man. And uh, we used to talk and share ideas and thoughts. And um, he's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. But there was going to be an event. And out of that event, uh, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run uh, pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq, you know, to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East, and make it all part of the New World Order. And we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And uh, sure enough, later 9-11 happened. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. He told you it was going to be a hoax. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no question. She says, there's, there's going to be war on terror. And he's laughing. There's no... <laughs> Who are we fighting? I mean, why do you think 9-11 happened and then nothing's happened since then? Do you think that our security is so great here that these people who pulled off 9-11 were able to can't knock down another plane? Come on, it's ridiculous. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this, war, this endless war on terror. And that's why we, and that was the first lie. And the next lie was going into Iraq, you know, uh, to uh, get Saddam Hussein out with his weapons of mass destruction. That was the next lie. Now, now specifically, this was a little over six years ago? This was... Uh, 11 months before 9-11. Yeah. And Nick Rockefeller, he's a lawyer, he is, he, he's become your friend over the previous years. And he's saying to you that there's going to be this big event, and then out of that we're going to have a war on terror, and it's just going to go on and on. Right. An endless war on terror without, without any real enemy. That you can never, so you can never define a winner. And, and uh, did he say that it's going to be perfect because you can't define an enemy? It just goes yeah, because on on? you can't define a winner. There's no one who's going to beat, so it goes on and on forever. And they can do whatever they want. They scare the hell out of the American public. Look, this whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. It's very difficult to say it out loud because people are intimidated against saying it. Because if you say it, they want to make you into a nutcase. Let's but the just... truth but the truth has to be, the truth has to come out. That's why I'm doing this interview. The fact of the matter happens to be that the whole war on terror is a fraud. It's a farce. Yet yeah, there's a war going on in Iraq because we invaded Iraq. And people over there fighting, you know. But the war on terror, that's a joke, you know. And until we discover what really happened on 9-11, and who was responsible for 9-11, because that's where the war on terror emanates from. That's where it comes from. It was 9-11 that allowed this war on terror to begin. And until we get to the bottom root of 9-11, the truth of 9-11, we'll never know about the war on terror. Aaron, you said that he was, and I think it's important, and I know this about the Rockefellers, about Dr. Dennis Cuddy and many others, who literally, you'll be 20 years old in lunch and at college, and it was David Rockefeller. And he hears your, I mean, they're experts at recruiting and getting what they call players, and that clearly he was. He, I mean, I want to make it specific and just get you to reiterate what you said last night uh, about you were you got thirty percent of the vote. You were having an effect. You 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 made mad as hell. They knew that you'd started the Constitution Party. Yeah. They knew that you were uh, somebody who was taking action and getting things done. You'd already made some big films, had a lot of other successes. Right. So they were trying to recruit you, and, and, and didn't it come down to the point of hey, we are here to recruit you, and don't worry, your chip's going to say, don't mess with us. You know, this guy's uh, don't touch. Yeah, yes, that did happen. Now, I was definitely being recruited, but it's more subtle. Well, in your words, just go through the process, and then, and then what do you say? Well, what it is is, remember, we were friends, and we used to have, used to go to my house a lot, we'd have dinner, we'd talk, and he'd tell me about business investments, how you get involved in, you know, or they would help me with this business investment or that business investment. 
And was I interested in joining the Council on Foreign Relations? You know, I would have to get a letter to join them. But was I interested in that? And, uh, you know, just, uh, just stuff, you know, leading you on. And, and uh, you know, I used to say it all that. I never really did that because that wasn't where I was coming from. And as much as I like you, Nick, you know, your ways and my ways were the, were the opposite side of the fence. You know, I don't believe in enslaving people. 